Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith says the new sexual harassment bill is gender neutral and is not designed to prosecute or malign men. She was speaking in the Senate last Friday. The House of Representatives passed the Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Bill on Tuesday, July 13. The legislation addresses concerns about sexual harassment that is employment-related, occurring in institutions or arising in the landlord and tenant relationship. We get more in this report. Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, while opening the debate on the Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Act 2021 in the Upper House on Friday, said the Sexual Harassment Bill represents a significant change in how the law provides improved protection to women and men from sexual harassment. The international community recognizes sexual harassment as a type of gender-based violence. It's placed in the discourse among such other violations of human rights, including emotional, verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. And indeed, while we must always be socially aware of all vulnerable groups affected by gender-based violence, including being sensitive to the fact that it can and does happen to men, the data does show that women and girls are disproportionately affected. She notes, that studies show that exposure to sexual harassment leads to various forms of abuse. Mr. President, the results of the pilot Jamaica Women's Health Survey 2016 indicate that 24% of women reported being sexually harassed during their lifetime. That's, that's one in four women, and that's reporting. So we know that it's likely higher. But it hasn't been studied scientifically here for very long. So there's not a lot of documented bodies of data about the impact of harassment on our people. Where the data exists, however, the evidence is clear that exposure to sexual harassment leads to physical, physiological, and professional consequences for individuals. Anger, stress, feelings of powerlessness, degradation, depression, anxiety, and increased alcohol use are all among the outcomes documented of sexual harassment. The legislation provides for the widening of the categories of persons who can be sexually harassed. For clarity, the bill is not about emasculation. It is not about removing the ability to flirt or start new relationships. It won't stop women who like to flirt from flirting, and it won't stop women who like you from giving you the signal so you know you can make a move. It is about the ones who don't want it. Quite simply do not. It is about knowing that if you are in a workplace or an institution, for a purpose or seeking quiet accommodation, enjoyment of your accommodation, you will be protected against unwanted sexual advances. It is about explaining what those are, unwanted sexual advances. It is about protecting persons from making jobs and accommodation available subject to sexual favors and giving recourse to persons who often are not empowered to complain or in any event, have never had a framework to prevent or protect them or give them any form of redress from experiences that depress them, disempower them, humiliate them, anger them, upset them, affect their productivity, make them leave otherwise good paying jobs and fulfilling employment at one end of the socioeconomic demographic, or have them suffer through indignity at the lower end because there's no cushion or source while you look for another job and the children have to go to school. She says the bill is aimed at combating sexual harassment in Jamaica and is not about undermining men. The language of the bill is gender neutral. No two ways about it. It protects men and women. The language is neutral and does not distinguish between genders. But because of the incidents of harassment being pride predominantly against women and girls, really, both internationally and locally, I know you'll forgive me if I lapse into speaking of women more often than not. But sexual harassment undermines the victim's dignity and self-worth, and it reinforces false gender roles and expectations. It is one of the threats to achieving the global 2030 agenda on which almost every country in the world has signed off, and in particular goal five of the SDGs, which is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. It also stipulates 
that institutions establish a sexual harassment policy statement within 12 months of its implementation. Also, an employer or a person in charge of an institution has a duty to keep and maintain a confidential register of sexual harassment cases. The debate in the Senate on the Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Act was suspended until October 1.